All right, guys, before we start today's episode, just a wee reminder that our next live show is on sale now. We're doing the Pavilion Theatre in Glasgow on Sunday, Easter Sunday, the 31st of March. Tickets are available in the description below. We've already sold a good couple of hundred and we hopefully we'll see you there. Mm. More than that, you've undersold it. What's that? I thought we'd sold more than that. A good couple of hundred? What does that mean, though? A good couple of hundred? To me, that means 200. No, we sold a good couple more than that. Right, okay. Good couple of hundred? A few hundred. Few hundred, right, okay. a good few. Good. I had me worrying that like I'd misread the WhatsApp. No, 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 no. Dying no, on our ass no. Or... The emphasis on the good, right? Okay, not on the few. Uh, yeah, and please remember to join the Patreon. Um, thank you to everyone who does for supporting us. There's loads of extra content over there, mainly episodes of the three of us answering questions, hanging out, that kind of thing. There's also all the live shows we've done so far. Yeah, there's now I believe five uh, live shows up on the Patreon. You get access, uh, you get first dibs on tickets for live shows, including. Uh, the stand-up shows that, that we've been doing secretly for just yeah, for the patrons. Yeah, which was loads of fun on Wednesday. Thank you so much to everyone that came out to that. Yeah, a couple special of special guests. guests and stuff like that, as you'll see. What a night. You'll have seen. It was a great night. But um, yeah, but do check out the Patreon, guys. Um, if you want to get all that extra content and be first dibs on all that kind of stuff that we're doing, do get the tickets for the Pavilion for Easter Sunday. And aside for that, guys, enjoy today's episode. Enjoy. Thanks for listening. <laughs> Welcome to the Some Laugh Podcast. It could be like, oh, that was some laugh, or there was, there was just some laugh. Some laugh. <laughs> well, no promising all laugh. No, <laughs> it's, it's, there's going to be some. It's some laugh. That would have been an <laughs> incredible, yeah. just luscious way to break right. into a conversation. Then. Yeah. Basically, Mike, you grew up on a farm. <laughs> I did! <laughs> well, so you were saying that I grew up on a farm and Norm MacDonald grew up on a farm and then he was uh, he's a very famous comedian, Canadian comedian, if people don't know, um, but uh, who comedians just loved sucking off. We love him. Norm. <laughs> Dude, don't we? If he was still alive, I would be destroying his hog. Yeah, mouth style. Oh, be Jesus! Yeah. I'd, I'd I'd make uh, mince meat of him. Yeah. But I saw him live actually in Chicago. Mm. Yeah, oh, when I was there. Right. Yeah, I remember the first time I met you in Galway. Yeah, uh, you just came back from Chicago, and I was like, "Oh my god, a real life American." He's Irish, but like he's been America. I remember that. <laughs> I remember that gig uh, very well because you were headlining uh, the gig, and I, and you were younger than I was, and I was pretty young at that time. <laughs> And I was like, who is this little shite hawk? <laughs> and he's a lot of people feel like that. Yeah. <laughs> For the listeners, by the way, the little shite hawk is Chris McCuffer Boy, who's a <laughs> guest host this week. <laughs> That's the first time I met Chris was in Galway in, uh, I think, 2017. Mm. Uh, I think it was that. I had just come back from America. I came back now. I was in America for two years. Uh-huh. I was in Chicago. And uh, and I was up every night, you know, doing the open Chirac. Huh? Chirac. As yeah. they say. It was, uh, it was certainly... Uh, yeah, the way I lived was <laughs> drill culture. Yeah, drill. Uh, Chief Keith was all the yeah. rage at that time. That's that shit I don't like. Yeah, and and Chief, uh, yeah. Chief Keith was so that was the start of the lads just kind of admitting to murders and yeah. songs, kind of thing. <laughs> and everyone was loving that. They were like, this is great crack now. So, uh, so I was over there, but so I was up every night, I like every night of the week doing. Uh, multiple mics and I was, and it was very, very over there it's just like real uh, grind culture you mm-hmm. know so it's like we Wake go up. seven nights a week multiple mics everyone there were people counting the amount of open mics they were doing you know this is comedians yeah yes, and everyone's like I did 25 this week and then he'll be like oh, oh I, I did 23 I did 23 <laughs> god fuck I'm a useless old bollocks but so I was there and anyway uh, I had a great time I wanted to stay Aye. Um, but the visa went up and mm. uh, and I was I was going out with a, a lady at the time as well, um, so it was, uh, we we had to leave the I had to leave her at the airport, and we were both oh, bawling and crying. No, yes. no, 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 oh, the tears were flowing down the <laughs> oh. face of Mike. I remember actually there was like a, a, an airport lady there, a big massive black lady, and she was just like she was like it's like y'all gonna be okay, y'all gonna see. <laughs> She's like, y'all gonna be all right. Y'all gonna see each other again. When the airport I'm, security person's yeah. uh, making sure you're okay, you know, you're in a fucking that's, state. That's right, because these are generally quite um, loveless people. But yeah. she, this was a very uh, jolly loving woman. And she's like, y'all gonna be okay. Mm-hmm. Sure we weren't. It was over. <laughs> but anyway, it was... It was <laughs> but you're okay now. It was dead dog. Well, and this is when you uh, first met Chris. Like yeah. Days afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> met Chris, a shell of a man. Um... But uh, yeah, so I was in. Uh, I was in. Just had a great. I had a great little time in Chicago. Now mm-hmm. it was a little dream. 
You, I remember you speaking to me about this. And you went there. Did you do improv there? Did you go to do improv? Before oh, you done stand up, or? yeah, why oh, did I? I went. Oh, actually, the, the night actually we met first. I have a funny story about that, Jennings. Oh, but um, I don't know what I remember. I was uh, quite drunk. <laughs> yeah, but uh, no, you didn't do nothing bad. You're you're <laughs> a gentleman. God. But uh, <laughs> when was this? Huh? When was this? So I met I met uh, Jennings. It was top secret the first oh, time. I, yeah. I, I I met Jennings, and I thought this is a silky customer. <laughs> I thought, here's here's a man who's who's well put together, who has ideas about life. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I know it sounded out wrong. Weird. So we went for me, you and Elliot Steele went for uh, a pint after, right? Yeah. Now what what happened then? This is a this is a seedy seedy story. But so <laughs> this lady who had been seedy at seedy laugh, yes, a seedy seedy laugh. <laughs> uh, this this shows Turn these lights down, man. Get some ambiance in here. This, this show is going to take a, a turn for the rotten. But so there was a so there was a a lady a few tables down. Now this is a a fucking uh, American woman and she comes over to our table with her date uh, a fellow named Charlie a weak little sickly Englishman <laughs> but who came from a lot of money as it turned out <laughs> yes she's like hey Dave. and she just said she goes you guys you guys were funny I guess you know she kind of came over with that wow. nagging American kind of like yeah. I guess you guys think you were funny and then uh, we were kind of like uh, are you would you ever fuck off maybe and uh, but then she just plonks herself down she goes sit down there Charlie and then Charlie's like okay I will and then Charlie sits down and she goes Charlie she's like go buy us shots we went shots and then she was like okay yes I'll get off and get the shots then oh. and so he comes out and is pretty kind of rotten and so I was sitting here she puts the hand on my leg this old this fucking old uh, wild wild woman so I says by a god Louisiana wild cat over here oh a femme fatale yeah. if there ever was one <laughs> this woman would get you get you shot down in Louisiana so <laughs> I says, uh, I says, oh Jesus! Now, so anyway, Charlie goes off, gets her the stuff, and I remember Charlie, poor little devil, uh, was there, and uh, uh, he go, he comes in, and he just goes, he goes, I'm really punching with this one, oh. and she's just like, oh my god, like whatever, like yeah. it was just, it was a really kind of a horrid situation. Yeah. But anyway, Charlie get up to go to the bathroom at uh, one stage, and then the other fella that we were with. Uh, I think Elliot was like to one who's like, why don't you tell him to fuck off? And you just <laughs> tell him to fuck off. You come hang out with us. I think in Elliot's head, head we were all going to have some kind of a... A, a foursome. A foursome. <laughs> Honestly, I thought, and sure, Jennings is just kind of there sipping his pint, uh, not really getting involved in it, just kind of laughing. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? You know, and like, so he was like, that's you one. Just tell him to fuck off. And she kind of looked at it. He's like, what are you on about? She's like, what are you talking about? And he's like, oh, fuck off. I don't know. So anyway... Uh, but so at one point anyway, she's there and she's like, you guys think you're funny and all this, whatever. And we're like, well, we are professional comedians. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> you don't want to say that. So I goes off to it's the... It's not all of but... Yeah. <laughs> so I goes off to the to the toilet. Yeah. And uh, when I come outside the toilet, who's waiting for me? The woman. Oh. Yes. Hand and a leg. Huh? The wild cat. Yeah, waiting oh. out, sniffing around the jacks. Sniffing around the shitter. So I come out. Anyway, <laughs> you wince that sniffing around the shitter. No, but, uh, well, you know. But so I comes out anyway and she's there and she uh, she gives me her phone. She's like, put your number in. And I was just like, okay. So I like put my number in anyway. And uh, so anyway, next thing I, I I met up with her the next night. Uh -huh. Yes, for an old pint. Yeah. So I met up with her for a pint and sure she was telling me about, so Charlie, the fellow that she was with, is like the heir to some biscuit fortune or something. I don't right. know. But he's from like Billy. Charlie McVitie probably. It could have been McVitie. <laughs> He could have been the McVitie villa. Although I think Jamie Lang is the uh, yes, uh, is the heir to the McVitie Jamie fortune. Lang? Yes, Langy. Who's that? Langers. Who you that? Posh podcast, whatever it's called. Oh, yeah. Parts. made in yeah. Chelsea. Yeah, Tom, Tom Lucy's brother. That's right. Yeah, brother, <laughs> brother. Uh, brother. Um, so, <laughs> they, so them two are. Uh, so Lang, so Lang started McVitie. So Lang's so, the McVitie here. So this had must have been Hobn. Well, Hobnobs is McVitie. Anyway, whatever. Really. This lad maybe was custard creams or something. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. But Johnny so, Bourbon. Yeah. So he's from a lot of money. So she was. She's stringing him along. To uh, not to, doing a very good job of it. Well, she has him by the short and curlies. He doesn't he know which way. He's up. punching. Yeah, and, and he's punching. a fucking. That's right. Here. That's right. But she, it's just. It, it. <laughs> But you're a biscuit here and she's punching me. <laughs> Why don't you fucking respect your dentist's yeah. uh, snacks? 
And you shut the fuck up. Yeah, it was it was it was kind of wild. And then so she was telling me this that she's been kind of stringing him along, manipulating him because she wants to meet. He has these connections to some other thing. And turns out she's really rich. Her family's worth mm. six hundred million. Yeah. And I, I I tell you how I found out that is because she told me that. Yeah. That was the big clue. Six hundred million. Like million. And I was like, oh Jesus, by God Almighty! And uh, that's good. And then she brought me back to her. Um, her massive, she had a, a penthouse in Canary Wharf. Come on. I've never seen the wealth, the like yeah. in my life. And by Jesus, she, uh, she, like, big lame. windows, I bet. Oh, my, lads. Huge windows. They are massive windows. I've never seen. BT Tower. Yeah. That's right. Shout. But then, do you know what she had on, uh, put on the telly? The big bang theory. I said, you can't buy glass. <laughs> I said that's priceless. <laughs> Classless. What if she'd useless. put on Frasier though? Huh? What if she'd put on? Well, then Frasier? I'd have to reconsider the whole thing. Yeah, yeah. And I'd have to. I'd have had to rethought it. It is true. Did you start, storm out at that point? Then, mate? Huh? did you? Well, I'll be Jesus. I didn't. I, can't, I, I, I was waiting to get what I came for. Yeah. But I. <laughs> no, but she. You did a bazinga. I say I met her. I met her a couple times because I was just kind of enamoured by the whole the kind of the voyeurism of just being in this. You're getting to see shit you would never mm. normally see bits of That's London right. apartments or yeah. that kind of stuff. A it's life amazing. that I, I, I couldn't like even when you walk into the complex that she lives like you're, a doorman brings you in and it's yeah. you're just like Jesus Christ this is mental don't you think that's the thing I like about being single right is yeah. that you get in situations like that that you would never normally experience if yeah. you're just with a partner because you're seeing you know, all different walks of life and getting to see shit that's well above your pay grade and all that stuff you know yeah because you're because you're, it, that's 100% true the, the adventure of being um, because I, I'm not single now, I'll say mm. that. Um, and I'm happy in my relationship. I'll say that, and um, <laughs> not with as much conviction. I, <laughs> and I have no longing for that rotten single life. No, there is adventure. There's adventure afoot in uh, singleness, where you're just in places that strange place, strange, strange houses. There's a cat clawing at you that you never knew. There's kind of kind of plants that are beside the wall that you're like, what the fuck is that? A you cactus. Know, a cactus. You know, just <laughs> women and they're, you know, they love a plant. And oh, there is, sure. I love, there's a kind of a, a, a surreality to that. Mm -hmm. You know, it's my favourite feeling in life is surreal. Like, Sean, I feel like, Jesus, this is mad. Yeah. You know, and I felt that with her because I was like, this is just... An insane other world. Yeah. But then she would do mad stuff. Like one time she took out her phone and uh, showed me like a picture of her and her friends on a super yacht. Right. And she said, who wouldn't want this life? And I and I was like, I, I'd said to her, because at that stage I'd gotten, I was added up to here You're now. getting fed up. I was, and I said, John, I'd rather be in a bin with my friend <laughs> than on that yacht. With, with you. Did they have Big Bang Theory on the background of that yours? <laughs> <laughs> on a big massive white screen. Big Sheldon on the ball. Yeah. Imagine young Sheldon was on. Uh, <laughs> fuck me. Who, who would not want to be on a yacht? Yeah. Somebody who's seasick. That's right. They would hate that. Yeah. But also... It's like somebody uh, who's deaf, somebody with rabies, deathly afraid of water. They would hate that. They'd absolutely hate she it. She doesn't think about that. Though. But she's not thought about that at all. But she did like she would say things to me like, "I could show you things you could never believe," and you know, you could show her things she'd never believe. She wouldn't. Really? I could. Things. I could show you a cow shitting in your mouth. Yeah. How would you like that? You ever seen a calf birthed? Yeah. <laughs> Did you ever see a man shove his fucking full arm up a cow's vagina? She'd never see that, man. She wouldn't see it. She wouldn't want to see it. Did you see that thing and it's like um, a, a cow gave birth to like a, a ball, like a flesh ball? Whoa. And it was just perfect, so smooth and it was a beautiful, soft ball of flesh. It was like a... But it wasn't sentient, this ball I don't of flesh. Think so. This was, uh, was... Maybe there was a brain in there somewhere, but it was just a ball. Because I'm kind of thinking out my head like crying from... Uh, <laughs> Uh, yeah. Teenage Mutant Hero Thrones Where they embed it in the guy's belly Yeah I don't think you could I embedded it It was just an alive Not alive But it was A ball Yeah You need to check it out <sighs> Anyway I don't know what that <laughs> I mean, I was, you know, I, I <laughs> We were talking Well <laughs> MacArthur Boyd Just <laughs> transported me Literally to a different universe <laughs> I was I did, And I think this is Something about it And this is What's great about your Storytelling Is I re literally Was you incapacitated me 
with this image the ball. of a ball of flesh. Yeah. The cow ball. A cow ball. Yeah. I'll look up. When I got off this couch, we were on a fucking super yacht. And then... <laughs> <laughs> well, that's how quickly he'll bring things to an orb of flesh. Yeah. Uh, but you want, I don't know, have you ever, uh, Jennings, have you ever been um, seduced by a, a rich woman? Well, I tell you what, I, I, I was going to say that, like, I think it speaks to your character, Mike, because by the sounds of it, if you hadn't been there that night, that could have been me that she was fucking going up to and asking for the number. And I don't know if I would have been above the temptation of her trying to allure me with all this money and stuff. Yeah. She wanted to take me to Paris. Yeah. But paint, she wanted to Paint me like one of her know, French girls. If she mm. wanted, you know, I mean, you were getting more out of it than the old biscuit boy was getting. Oh, 100%. You know, yeah. uh, Johnny Milk Chocolate Digestive over here. And you know what as well? And this will this will just, this will show you, I think, and I think about this sometimes, so I think it might have been a cowardly move. <laughs> But she said to me at one point, she she got me, she would video call me, which I felt was intrusive. An entitlement only a woman from wealth would, would do, you know, like that. We, I know you two days and you're video calling. That's a bit kind of, do you know what I mean? The only person I video call is a family member who's sick. It's yeah. the only time I'm video calling anybody. I think that's yeah. more common in a relationship that either is like a bit illicit, the way that you're describing, or maybe if it's like a, long, a long distance thing. But there is... And sometimes there will be people that will be quite keen on the video call or the voice message thing, you know, Peeking above your just life. texting. Peeking I know in. they are, and I've had people do it. I've had people, I, I've been there with a lady next day, she's calling, mm. and I have to say, what in the living Jesus are you doing here now? Yeah. <laughs> you you put the fright of Jesus in me. I see the call and I'm like, what the f- yeah. You don't want to throw my phone out the Look window. In my house. Yeah. yeah. But it feels like you're inv- you know, you're invading my consciousness. Sometimes I wonder whether it's like, are you getting lured in more with a video call so you feel more invested and are they doing that consciously on any level? I'd say there there is that, but I, I, I think on some level with this lady it was just a sheer entitlement. Um... Do you know what? She wasn't that bad a girl. I don't know why I'm painting her. She was. She was oh, grand. We all hate money to people. We do hate. It. We have a. Do you know? We have prejudice against it. Um, <laughs> it's a new type of prejudice. Yeah, but she did try to. She actually got me. She tried to get me. Then she would get hook me into the whole situation. She was like, "We're gonna have a threesome," says she to me, mm. and I says, "By God." <laughs> I'd love that. Yeah. <laughs> I'd love that. I, with you know, this other guy? Well, no, no. I'd never had this. This was a... Biscuit it, it wasn't with... No, she didn't want... She, I don't think she's even kissed fucking Charlie. She was stringing him along with fucking... Just eating lemon meringues with him and I drinking tea. I thought this tea. was going to be some, you know, he's so moneyed and he's had such pleasures of the flesh and mind that he then fucking likes to take his also rich girlfriend out and meet a couple of ruffins, you know. <laughs> a ruffian. You know, you A little ne'er-do-well, like rice. <laughs> Co- <laughs> Cocaine, yes. Clyde Bank, fucking yeah. Croydon. Yeah. You know, not exactly. You're, you're more poppers than princes, you know. That's absolutely what right. Say, we're, right? From the, we're from the, the rough end of the stick. Yeah. The, yeah. I mean, three separate <laughs> tracks that you're all on the fucking wrong side of over here. Yeah. And she wants to get banged out by these funny clowns for fucking yeah. nonsense time. Whereas, you know, maybe he sits in the gilded cupboard and watches. And I'd say he would and he just shoves little golden eggs up his arse. But <laughs> Fabergé eggs. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Fabergé love eggs, just not even made for maybe sex. That was that. Maybe it was money eggs was his biscuit or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> What biscuit do you think this? I know that's not what we're talking Soggy. about. Your exciting threesome. <laughs> yeah. so just, I'd, say, biscuit boy. I'd say he's. Eat, I'd say he's had a few of them. He looks like a man who's the sadness of a man who's taken in a few soggy biscuits. Yeah, a, a little boarding school boy who's yeah. uh, been come done. You forget that the boarding school. Some of the really rich uh, fuckers. Because I've been reading about the the Sacklers. Oh, do you know about these lads, Jennings? I vaguely. So, uh, they're the, the pharmaceutical old, industry, as we were They're saying. from a, a crowd called Purdue Pharma, and uh-huh. they were the they were the people who paid the the judges, they paid the regulators, and they got oxycotton past uh, the fucking whatever thresholds they had to get to sell heroin to people right. in America. So yeah. they're seen as complete and utter fucking villains and maybe the biggest uh, culprits of the opioid crisis in America which is I killed I think half a million people or something uh, so you know they're rotten eggs yeah um, there goes the Oxycontin sponsorship for the podcast. Ah, fuck <laughs> 
I knew Jesus. you were going to get in trouble with that, man. You know, but but uh, when I was reading, so I'm reading, tenants is one thing. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Do you have tenants? Uh, Oxycontin. They're inviting us to the brewery next week. You know? <laughs> Tell me too. A couple of free pills. Oh, that's it? good. <laughs> in the big vat of Oxycontin. Yeah. 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 Yeah
if you believe that, like, you, like you'd have to have brain damage, would you? Mm. Or, or is it just because it is a very well, convenient? How else would you get through your day if you didn't think? If, if you know, if you look at the disparity between your life and other people's life, if you go, oh, I, I, this isn't a choice. This is just a fluke of luck. Very hard to have any kind of self respect. So you kind of need to delude yourself into thinking something just to get through your day. Yeah, you know? right. It's kind of self. And it's excluding a lot of the external factors and a lot of the luck that it takes to succeed. So, like, I remember, like. See, I just, I guess when you go to uni still, it was a couple of years after credit crunch and all that stuff. And a lot of people and a lot of my mates, and I'm sure it'd be the case for both of you, but like, oh, there's no jobs, there's fuck mm. all, there's no opportunity, right? Yeah. And I do remember thinking like, well, you can think like that and then it just feels like there's like, you're just, well, I might, I might as well just stay in this call centre because there's no opportunity. Or you can go, I'm going to fucking take a chance and try to do what I do and all the rest of it. Now, 10 years later... I'm lucky enough to be doing stand up, whatever. But there was a lot of cunts. But, but there was a lot of luck involved. Yeah. And I would never go, well, if everybody just had the mindset that I had, then they would have succeeded. Now, don't get me wrong. There's going to be no Jennings self help book. No, well, maybe we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> it's called Settling for Less. <laughs> <laughs> it's called Some Life. <laughs> <laughs> do you want to have some life just like me then? Uh, but no, but I do think that a part in, like, like anything, changing your mindset and being a bit more positive will have more positive effects. But so much uh, whether you succeed or not, is so down to your luck and, and some people just it's the whole fucking pull yourself up by bootstraps some people don't have fucking boots and yeah. so you can so it's like you're just pulling your own so, toes off like man. there's so many like lucky opportunities that you get and you can only have so much control over like you know how your life turns out and you try and do your best with that bit of control you've got by you know being positive or whatever but ultimately and this is what these rich cunts don't get is that they've had all the luck in the world and so have we yeah and so have we, you know, just so to be bad, but we would, we've at fucking... least got the thing to turn around and go, oh well, they're just choosing to be yeah. poor. We never say that, no. but these people do. Yeah. They should be killed. The rich. <laughs> well, I did. The French Revolution seemed fun. Yeah, that's what I will say about that. Like that, the the crack of just all of us breaking yeah. into mansions and just like gelatin yeah gelatin that's right <laughs> and just chopping fuckers heads off like imagine getting out Bezos and yeah. Moss oh, like bouncing along the hallway oh, just bop 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 doing ding. a few keepy uppies with Musk's fucking <laughs> noggin here's the thing but you don't need to kill them just fucking tax but them but I want to mark <laughs> I would rather kill them <laughs> yeah like tax them is the this is the logical rational way right. yeah. of doing things but what about what what do the bloodthirsty maggots get with that <laughs> but I do think I wonder because even about like the the idea of uh, like revolution and everything like that mm -hmm. um, I mean Russell Brand used to be a big one for that he'd be, he'd be saying you know um and it turns out, of course, now that um, he was uh, he was only saying that to, <laughs> to, to distract to everyone. Have sex with people. Yeah, um, um, sexual assault people. Is that's also, right. Yeah, yeah. Nasty, nasty, but worse. Nasty character. Nasty character. Cruel little yeah. man. But I wonder because um, I often think to myself, oh, wouldn't it be great having a cause, you know, yeah. and go out and fight for something? But then, in reality, that wouldn't be great at all, would it? <laughs> That'd be shit To have a cause Ah just your friends And f people dying And whatnot. And no it's, it's, So we couldn't have it better Really Yeah no. so, so we couldn't have it better I know That's great Because if only, the only cause That we've got Is just trying to do Our own thing Yeah You know what I mean And just your own Try day stand up Or whatever your what business What a luxury is that is It's a massive luxury Fucking hell I read fucking Nelson Mandela Long Walk to Freedom 27 years In prison For his cause yeah. You can't do that anymore. It was like, <laughs> no, no way, man. I want to be able to post on Instagram or whatever. So oh, like, man. Nelson Mandela, you may not know this, but there's a there's a street in Glasgow named after Nelson Mandela. And how good was that Pizza Hut? In Nelson Mandela Place? Yeah, right in town. I don't think I ever went to that one, actually. Oh, it was good. They, could have, they had a subway that shut down there as well. Yeah, now it's a Yosushi, but a while ago. And that just shows you, hut. like, how having politics affects a business because yeah. that's called Nelson Mandela and fucking they're shutting left, right and centre. That Yoshi's just you'll be next. Because of course there's shame. probably some pro, there's probably some pro white South African people here in Scotland that that would really turn off to Nelson Mandela Street. Apparently so. It seems like it. Yeah. yeah man. Do you want to see that ball? 
the ball of flesh. Yeah, look at that. <laughs> yeah, I can't believe you're still even thinking about that. I ball haven't of flesh. stopped it. It's the the you, Drost project. If you want to see it, type in cowball fetus. Well, show it to me here now. Have you got it? Holy shit! <laughs> Whoa! God almighty, that's rotten. It's just a ball. Fuck me. With like hair. But hair on it. It's nice pattern until it's, it's cute. But you Imagine could, you put that in your jumper. But keep I, you warm. Well, I suppose you could use it as like an ottoman or something <laughs> in a living room. Do you know what I mean? To have fuckers sit on. A poof the cook. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's quite nice. Mm. I know. It would, have any been around uh, farms growing up at all? Uh, no, I mean, I kind of lived adjacent to some, but never like in, like you know, no, yeah. not really. What? what what is it like growing up in a farm? This well, I'm can I tell you, my, can I tell you my farm experience? Yeah. Oh, so the nursery, mm. the daycare. Oh. They would take us on a wee field trip to a farm. Yeah. And I loved it. There was a big barn and it was full of hay mm. and there was a rope for the top of the barn. It was like a fun farm. Yeah. And you could grab the rope and you could swing on the rope into the big pit of hay like it was a swimming pool. Good lord. Obviously, I had hay fever, so it absolutely destroyed me. This <laughs> act, you know. But that was just your life growing up, Mike, wasn't it? <laughs> Is that what it's like on a farm? Is it just, just well, swinging into big swimming pools full of hay? Well, I tell you, there was um, uh, th- th- what you experienced there would have been um, would have been something that we would have kind of frowned at. Yeah. You know, would have sure. been trivial, um, <laughs> trivial, childish. Um, yeah. nonsense. We were there to work. Yeah, we we're there every day to work. Work from the time we were five or six on the farm. Yeah, we were put to work on the farm. Um, because one of us was to be the heir, and that was the thing, right? right. So, you and your brother. This is your this is your biscuit fortune right here. Well, this was our biscuit fortune, and my father honestly believed it to be an empire, and he still believed that he would refer to himself in the third person as the Lord and Master uh-huh. of the farm. With no irony whatsoever. And um, so. Well, in a sense, he was. Oh, he was, yeah. And he felt himself to be a, a kind of a, a king of sorts. And he, he was like a, a king in that, like, kind of like a spoiled child. He, you know, should I say King Louis XIV would just walk around and shit as he walked? And people had, would come up behind him and just clean his arse. And that's what you were doing from the age of five. Well, someone had to do it and my father <laughs> didn't have time to shit. I, this is this is actually a, this is actually a true story. I, so, when I was, my father would tell us, so he's kind of, I suppose he kind of was like, there was elements of kind of Mussolini or some sort of totalitarian figure that kind of, he created the narrative of what was happening mm-hmm. on the farm. So he would kind of tell you like that. He never, Animal farm, if you will. It was very similar <laughs> to four legs good, two legs bad. Yeah. Um, it was Orwellian, now that you say it. Um, so he would just tell us, he'd be like, I'm working all the time and I don't stop working. Uh-huh. And that's the truth and that's what's happening. Now, in reality, he's on the phone to Frank Grace a lot of the time. His friend. <laughs> Frank Grace? Frank Grace's is friend. Who is he? Well, Frank was another farmer who lived yeah. across town. Um, so my father kind of hide in different sheds and talk to Frank. I know some farmers and in Scotland there's a thing called the Young Farmers Society. Yeah. Yeah. Did they have this in Ireland? Do so, you have a part of this in Ireland? So in, in Ireland we have a thing called Mokra. Now Mokra is where uh, young farmers would go to mate with other young farmers. Yeah. So you see the thing is there's a lot of, and I suppose this could be classed as some way classist and if we were in a Stalinist Russia we would have all been slaughter, slaughtered as kind of landowning, landowning class and the, yeah. the, the means of production would have been seized off us and we would have been fucking hung, drawn and quartered heads <laughs> on a pike. Yeah, but not to be too, uh, well, <laughs> I really said not to be you, too anti-Stalin. <laughs> no. To you're be anti-Stalin. De- you're very defend Stalin. Uh, no, no. <laughs> well, Stalin I'm, was. You know, I'm just saying. <laughs> don't throw the baby out with the bath. Water. But a lot you had of a few good ideas. Got and it'd be in these Russian farms don't know anything about farming. No, and they know. made it absolute. That was the problem. See, yeah. we know how to farm. Yeah, right? farmers. So, because we're farmers. Yeah. And it's bred into us, yeah. right? So, my father believes in breeding. Mm-hmm. So, in the complete kind of, I suppose, Hitler sense of the word, he believes. Eugenicism. That, yes. And he do, he believes so. If there's nature versus nurture, he believes in hundred percent nature. Yeah, he believes if you put him uh, uh, and stuck him as a baby in Indonesia, somehow he would make it back to County Kilkenny <laughs> and start farming. Yeah. He just doesn't believe in any way environment has anything to do with anything, mm-hmm. and that's why he didn't feel as a father he had to teach us anything. He thought we were just going to come out 
as fully formed uh, farming beings and just yeah. know how to drive and fix things and weld and stuff. As opposed to <laughs> the idea not... of Tabula Raza, the blank slate. That's that some right. Some people believe in. Exactly. Yeah, you're born a blank slate. Natural and everything. talent yeah. over, you know. Oh, 100%. And just that because he felt if he's a man and he's from land, <laughs> as he would believe himself, he's from land. He's from land. And if he marries birthed a woman. from huh? dirt. Birthed from dirt. Birth from the dirt, just fucking, you know, a man who, who understands the workings of the wind and the rain and, uh, you know, a man who... Uh, Crop take rotation. A, yeah, and who can take a cow as a, as a friend. <laughs> in, a friend on a cold night, yeah. if you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, shagging the cow. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it's us. I was thinking this, oh, cock up a cow's vagina till he comes yeah. inside it yeah. again and again and again, again and again uh, but so he he believes if he marries a woman which is imperative to do you need to marry a woman that's also from land yeah and if you don't the farm will be gone in a generation oh hence the importance of the mock Th- that's right because the children that will come out of an unholy alliance such as marrying a woman from the town <laughs> <laughs> a woman would not have dropped a drop of land in her blood. The child yeah. will come out and sure he'll be trying to start a grocery shop or something. <laughs> some shit. There'll be no that. some shite like that. But uh, this is we always thought this was a bit of a laugh growing up. Turns out he was deadly serious about this now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Turns out this is in no way uh, a laugh whatsoever. Mm. And at one point, uh my brother who was taking over the farm uh was seeing a, a woman from the town. And he got given an ultimatum. You get rid of that no good two bit piece of skirt. Yeah. Or you don't get you don't get this piece of land. Really? End of. Yeah. yeah. And so he sure he he he, he, he killed her. My brother killed her. <laughs> <laughs> he well, killed the girl. Yeah. No, but he did break up with her and then uh, they probably would have broken up anyway, but and my brother was not happy about it, and every, we were all screaming at my father like, "You can't do this! You can't interfere!" You know, he's just you know out of his mind. He, he eats a lot of chocolate, but um, that's neither here nor there. But he's, <laughs> yeah, yeah. but it, it it kind of speaks to his childish disposition. He loves ice cream cones, eats chocolate bars in the morning, eats raw sausages. Um, that's fucking wild enough now. We'd have to try. Sounds stop like him. me, man. I, yeah. I, I, yeah. Would you eat a raw sausage now? No. <laughs> That's, I'll cook it I'll take a raw sausage I'll cook it and I'll eat it oh fuck but I've seen that that's quite unpopular in some places in America they'll just spread the raw sausage on bread and mm. eat it like that is yeah. that something your dad would do my father would eat just raw sausage there doesn't need to be bread there doesn't need to be butter there you'll get needs... worms or something well it did turn out he, he had major stomach problems Years later. Yeah. And um, he, he had kidney stone and he had lots of, there was, you yeah. know, uh, he has to take medicine now all the time just to kind of, because he was eating, sure he'd be biting the heads off of pigeons and he would, <laughs> do you know, he was. Really? He, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, well, the thing was, so he'd be out in the, he'd be out in the farm, but this is actually a story, sorry, I told you this um, when you were on the pod that yeah. time and you'll like this now, yeah. Jennings. But See, just for you start angry, quite like, Yeah. <laughs> Because we had a fella, um, we had a workman, uh, kind of an oddball, who was from a place called the Butts in Kilkenny Town named Henry Monk. Yeah, I remember this. And, from uh, the Patreon of your That's podcast. right, yeah. And so uh, Henry Monk uh, was a fella that worked for us. And uh, he was kind of a, uh, we'd call a queer hawk. Kind of an odd. My grand calls me that. Uh, a queer hawk. A queer hawk. Yeah. yeah. So we called that in Ireland. It's basically just for an oddball or someone who's just... Uh, you can't not really right. not right you can't really film the, uh, f- uh, figure them out but so Henry Monk would call his he'd call Wellington boots because that's what we call the things we'd wear <laughs> going out in the farm he'd call them me Welligans he'd be like wear me Welligans and we'd be like I think they're where you left them yeah. and when we'd eat dinner he'd because you'd have the fellow that worked on the farm be in eating dinner with us and he'd just get big massive violent chunks of butter and he'd fuck them on his potatoes and he'd be like sure there won't be butter for everyone else now Henry hey you know, he just didn't care. You know, he just he had, he just wanted to be full of butter. I don't know. Yeah. And then he wasn't. He was a stick. It's like a stick thin then as well. Even though he was eating like a pound of butter a day, <laughs> I don't know how the fuck he was doing it. The keto uh, diet, man. He was probably on on the keto, even Some though demonstrably he wasn't. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, observably he was not. <laughs> um, so well, keto people eat I loads think of butter. You can eat butter on the keto diet, actually. Can you? Oh yeah, yeah. I know. I got. We know a guy who's keto, and I bumped into him, and he just had two big bits. Of butter. Well, then maybe and he is. was very thin, so 
I mean, ketosis. Yeah, it's the club. Maybe it is something Henry could have could have softened. So he looking back, your Henry no. story by speculating that he was an early adopter of no. keto. No, but it did, maybe he looking back, he was forward thinking. It certainly <laughs> didn't seem like it because he was, uh, you know, it seemed, you know, he, he had about three teeth in his head. He smoked about sixty Carol's fags a day. <laughs> None of that goes against the you tendency know, of ketosis. There wasn't enough water in the world to wash him. Do you know that kind of way? Uh, he was just, he just. Is. But dirty in a way that couldn't be rectified. You know, it's my father's the same. My father's hands cannot be washed. They're just absolutely caked, just caked in shite. Like these, these calluses are thick. They're like little canyons yeah. full of shit. And there's nothing that can get it out. Mm. Nothing. Because it's just every day. He's more shit than man. So um, anyway, uh, uh, Henry Monk. So one day anyway, we were out. So a cow had died, mm. right? And uh, the cow is left, the dead cow is left in the yard. And what happens is a fella called a knacker comes to collect the cow. These are fellas that just have a, a place where they bring dead animals. I don't know what they do with them. We don't ask. That's their own business. Their business. They have their fun and that's, so yeah. we don't, uh, you know. So anyway, the knacker doesn't come and collect the fucking cow anyway. And then he's not going to be coming till Monday. So the dead cow is just left in the yard for the whole fucking weekend. And anyway, I come out the yard uh, at one stage. And Henry Monk is eating one of the cow's eyeballs. I don't know if he's picked it out his thing. It's like this. And I was like, what in the fucking shit? And he, he was eating it and I don't, he didn't think like, he obviously didn't want to be seen and he took a bite out of the thing and then like there's kind of like this gook and I was like, he looked up and he sees me. And I was like, jeez, I never been, I was like, I didn't know what to say and he just goes, can you get me some butter? <laughs> I said, Jesus yeah. fucking Christ, above. Yeah. And so I went in and my, I told my mother and she just said, give him the bit of butter, give him butter bring, him, yeah. bring it out to him. And uh, he ended up then after that, like we were kind of looking for reasons to get rid of Henry Monk. Aye. You know, yeah. Uh, yeah. reasons to let him go. Yeah. But fucking hell, he was as, he was as big a queer hawk as we uh, came across. <laughs> yeah, I don't, think, I don't think we had anybody like that on the farm I went to. Huh? There was a well, big rope. And well, they wouldn't let, you wouldn't let a Henry Monk around children now. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Well, eyeballs are part of the keto diet as well. Yeah. No meat, no you know. Cubs, no no cubs, eyeballs. No. The eyeballs wouldn't be long in the child's head if Henry Monk was around. <laughs> 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 Fucking yeah. hell. I'm always kind of curious about yeah. you. You're a big uh, cinephile. Yes. Or the paedophile of film. <laughs> yeah. well you. You're turned on by cinema. <laughs> you yeah. like, you love your pictures. I do, yeah. You, you know a lot about yeah. films. How did you? You know, this might seem obviously this is a, just a city boy. How did you ever see city films? Boy. No, <laughs> but like I know people from rural communities, and yes. and they'll have a cinema that's in a van or something. Yeah. How did you get any films as a as a rural person? Uh, well, I think. Um, Sorry if that's ignorant to ask. No, it's not. It's I suppose it started as uh, like it did with many boys as a way of escape, mm. you know, escape from the the Henry monks and the <laughs> and my father's tyranny of uh, expectation and uh, you know. Uh, well, no, do you know what I loved first? We watched first the very first things we were watching. You just watched the other day was Bond. Oh. So Bond was the first thing that we thought. Now this lad knows what's he. This lad knows what's going on. He knows what to do. Um, so Bond was the first thing we loved. That was on Irish TV. Bond is on Irish TV right now. It's mental this because second. you think Ireland wouldn't really be into the idea of a, a, a British secret agent with a license to kill. I think that'd be a bit close to the bone. I think we soured on Roger Moore, but see, we had accepted Connery <laughs> as. Kind of like, because the Irish kind of, we've a, there's a softening towards the Scottish, you know. We don't, mm. we've no problem I've with the Scots. That. Yeah, I've you know, that. Scots have in our, in our mind. Now, if you were to really look back in history. <laughs> Let's not. The, <laughs> the Scots aren't that innocent when it comes no, to Ireland. But not. we've kind of decided to forget that altogether. I, I, I think that's so strange. Because the last time I was in Dublin, I was saying on stage, I was like, oh, you know, I'm a diet tan. Yeah. etc. you know, we're British, you know. Yeah, um, and I feel bad about that. And you're like, oh no, don't worry about it. You're all right. You're okay. Oh no, it, we've completely for, uh, forgiven the Scots for anything that they did, rightly so, because you kind of and you've also kind of renounced England in a lot of ways. So you're like, mm. you want to be independent. Um, and there's a huge amount of Catholics here that were of Irish, and so there's like, you there. know, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, <laughs> exactly. So we uh, we feel kind of a kinship to Scotland and we'd like Scotland to get independence 
and we'd love everyone to just abandon England if possible. You know, like that's just that is how people just leave them to rot. Yeah. But having said that, you love James Bond. But I loved fucking we told we like Connery because like, Connery's a good man. Aye. Now you told me I earlier that, but... Connery's <laughs> accent is is nonsense. No one talks well, like not that. Who talks no, like he's that. like the only guy who talks like that. <laughs> <laughs> and that was the world believed Scottish people spoke But I don't know way. whether it's just him well, it's he, money he, 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 he said everything like shh like he did in yeah, the, the your fucking money money. But even if he didn't have a lisp Give her a little slap yeah, An open hand yeah, slap yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> If a but woman's think... upsetting you discipline her <laughs> Discipline with an open handed slap Because they'll always try to have the last word That's what, they, uh, that's the what he says but yeah. Now a lot of fucking... Scottish people have said that I kind of thing over the years particularly of his generation But uh, <laughs> Billy, no one talks like Billy Conley either, really. Come on now. <laughs> you what know, do you mean? You no, never, I, you're never again. Part is try to just be understood, I think. Yeah. You need to be understood by right. English people. So you have to speak like a freak. <laughs> 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 do you know that way? <laughs> you know, you just get that. Yeah. Thing. But I, you I, can do it in an endearing way, and both Connery and Connolly did. Did. Yeah. But it's hard. And in a way that sounds authentic. Listen, doctor, Aye, no, you know. shut your fucking mouth. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Goldfinger, you wank. <laughs> <laughs> shut up. <laughs> Arsehole. <laughs> you know? So he had a lisp and a mad accent, so he had to really invent an understandable. Aye. Yeah. You well, know. how do you do it now? Because, you know, you're, you're, you're talking about these fellas, and how have you changed? How have you defrauded your own being? <laughs> Must and you been. too, Jenny. Yes. I've, I've definitely softened my accent a lot like when you listen to me when I was early 20s I had a lot more nasally a lot more colloquialisms all that stuff but through for me it's probably partly going to uni partly uh, get, actually working in a call centre and having to speak to English people all the mm. time mm. and partly just doing gigs in England and you just learn to so I just naturally will speak but I think my voice is a bit more elastic and sometimes go back more into Talking more Glaswegian Code switch You know what oh, I mean yeah. Yeah. But When I was working in a call centre I, I phoned this guy up Right I was working I was selling windows mm. Over the phone Can I, imagine? How long did you work in this place By the way Two weeks <laughs> <laughs> <'Cause>, People <laughs> always need windows <laughs> Well but pe- Nobody's going to buy one off of me No not Microsoft You were selling it <laughs> yeah, Selling uh, Glass windows Glass window <laughs> Penny cook windows Do you have any holes in your house I remember I phoned this old guy up And I was Caping like Keeping holes <laughs> In your house Need any, any cannonballs a cannonball's gone through your house. Do you need any holes filled? A hole filled. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I wish I spoke in Sean Curry's voice. I remember phoning up this guy, be like, "Hi there, this is Christopher from the Penny Cook Windows After Installation Team." Now, obviously, you know we see that your previous client. We want to reward your, uh, be, your 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 custom. So in doing that, obviously, uh, you know you might not want any windows right now. But in an ideal world, if you needed any services done, would you would you like to? Um, you get an incredible discount. And the guys went, "My God, you sound like a machine gun." <laughs> That's yeah. what he told me. He said I spoke like a machine a gun. Machine I was like, gun. I'll fucking press a machine gun up against your dome, you yeah. old cunt. You old cunt. Do you know what I forgot? I actually see I, I once done a, a work placement at the evening times, right? And uh, and I was probably about nineteen and I was speaking very glad I was very self conscious about it because a lot of middle class bankers not yeah, I did yeah. but I had to phone a lot of people for stories. And, I, and there was a guy across from me that talked exactly like this. So I started copying his voice. Hi there, this is Mark Jennings from the Evening Times and blah, blah, <laughs> And I didn't have a phone. And people around me would laugh because you knew it was heavy. But I felt more comfortable doing that. And I felt more like a proper journalist. So also was, putting on that persona. I go, yeah. hello there, this is uh, not me. This is uh, journalist me. Which uh, was in that, you know, what was that fucking film that your man walked, worked in the call centre and he was uh, St- uh, Stenfield. Um, oh, that new lad. He's brilliant, isn't he? Well, yeah, but you know, he's... He, He's in fucking uh, Judas and the Black Messiah, and he's in uh, Get Out. He was the guy, and he was also his guy goes Get he, Out. Yeah, Get Out. Yeah, yeah he's, good. He, he's in Atlanta. Anyway, yeah. whatever. But he's in that film. It's kind of a surreal film where he's in. Uh, Turns he's out working, horses eventually. Yeah, that people turn into horses as cocaine. Arnie Hammer, the fucking cannibals, there doing evil things and yeah, it turned out yeah, he wasn't yeah, yeah. it wasn't a stretch character wise for old Arnie <laughs> the, the, it's like when Chris D'Elia was a paedophile in that sitcom and it turned yeah. out he was a paedophile in real life allegedly called a pedo yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I remember I don't know if you've ever watched Jiminy Lick like it's this Martin Short character who's this big wears a big fat suit and interviews celebrities but it's the fun, it's, it is the funniest thing in the world yeah. in, in my opinion yeah. it's this big fat he just has a 
piece of paper and he just slaps them. And it's just like he's like interviewing Tom Hanks. He's like, Tom Hank. And he just starts slapping. He's like, why are you so you? Yeah. And it's just the most dumbass questions. But it's, and then he just starts falling out of his chair and he's yeah. stuffing donuts in his face. It's just so good. But he has one time he has like uh, Jack Black on. And he's like, so in this movie, you're playing the, the chubby best friend. Again, big, big stretch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right. Well, to get back, mate, to I think what Chris was getting at, and was something I was wanting to ask you was yeah. about because obviously we spoke about it at the start. You going to America? Yeah. You grew up in the farm. Aye. I assume going to America was your was the real escape, I suppose, from Aye. the more rural life. And and what was what was that decision? And was it inspired by your your love of movies, etc.? So I tell you what it was. Now I did I did a commerce degree. Mm. So I went from school. I had no idea uh, what to do, but I was decent at school. And I did like I remember um, when I was in like fourth year, I had a choice where I loved history. And I wanted to study that, but I remember the careers people telling me, no, you do accounting, you do this, because this will get you a fucking job. Yeah. And like, um, back then, and maybe now, I don't know what the fucking crack is, but they were like, you do shit to get a job, mm. right? So you do a language to get you into a university and you do this to get a job. So anyway, everyone just told me, they were like, you, you'd you be good at business now. And I'm like, well, what leads you to think that now? I'm like, yeah, do that now, accountancy. You'd be good at that now, would you? And I'd be like, okay. No offense, but yeah. that's my idea. Yeah, it is. Well, it's mad to see. And I was an absolute little toe rag in school. Uh, you know what I mean? Oh, I suspended really? five times. I was a nasty Why? little piece of work. What yeah. was the worst thing you get suspended for doing? Well, I pranked the, the vice principal um, <laughs> from a, a ski trip in Andorra. See, we went on this uh, a ski trip to... Andorra with a fella called John Carew who had left the school. So he's a teacher. So the the, the trip was technically outside the bounds of the school, but he still wanted to go on the trip because he went every year and he brings students with him and it was this whole thing. Why did he get fired? Huh? Why did he lose his job? Uh, they were just cleaning house now. He had he had, had a fucking, he was a boozy Susie. Right. He was. He used right. to come in sometimes. I had him for French and he'd just go, just be quiet and you don't have to do anything. And he'd put his head in his hands and it was... Yeah. Uh, and put Amelie on for the 10th week in a row. 100%. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I'd, I'd have him for P. He'd kick, he'd kick out a fucking football. He'd say, I have a game there now and he'd sit in his car and smoke fags and sure, more power to him. We respected him for it. <laughs> so I like Crew. I liked him. He was, he was just, you know, he was fed up. He'd uh-huh. had enough. He gave up and he was fairly upfront about that. But he wanted, to be fair, he was very sick at the time. He wanted to do one last fucking ski trip yeah. to, to Andorra. So we went, we were fortunate that time. So we were, uh, I was 15, I turned 16 on the trip. But we came, we went with lads that were older than us. And they were, uh, right. there was a cruelty to these men that <laughs> didn't have a mother or father. They just had, a, <laughs> they had a pension for paying that was hard to understand. Yeah. But they... So their whole thing, what ended up happening one day, the, the whole trip was lawless because it wasn't officially with the school. Carew was fu- like in fucked. He was helped was fucked. His son was there and his son's friend, uh, they were they met in AA, I think. And I think they might have fallen off the wagon on the trip. <laughs> so it was just the inmates were running the asylum. And one day we went down uh, to the town in Andorra and went to a weapons shop. Mm. There was a weapons shop. Yeah. And everyone got peppers. Where is Andorra? Huh? Where is Andorra? It's like between France and Spain. Right. Right. So we went to Barcelona on that trip as well. And we went, weapons. a lot of lads went to have a wank at a peep show. Sure. There was, there was a lot of things were going on. But anyway. Uh, <laughs> and this is someone who wasn't an official school trip. This was not, a, <laughs> this was off the books. It's amazing that our parents let us go looking back. Yeah, but they were bamboozled by the fact that it was with a teacher and it had been a regular a teacher, trip. Carew. Yeah. Mm. But Carew was gone wrong. Yeah. Crew was gone. <laughs> Crew was Kurtz. Yeah, he was Colonel Kurtz. Uh, we had been sent to terminate his command. Uh, you know. Uh, so uh, you know, he was just talking about like you were saying last night, just the slugs on razor blades, and you know, the horror, the horror. Um, so anyway, it it was just you know, it was the, it was the wild west. Everyone got armed. There was pellet guns, pepper spray, batons, sticks. What was your uh, weapon of choice? Gas. I didn't get one. That was not my... I'm a I'm a lover, not a fighter. <laughs> I was also 15 times I hadn't hit puberty. I hit puberty very late, so I was a, I was a, I was a boy. Yeah. I was a child. So yeah. my thing was keep myself out of trouble. I don't have the muscle density to engage in anything. Mm. Um, and they knew that too. But anyway, 
I would I'd be trying to endear myself. So the older guys were kind of, I suppose, a, you know, I, I don't know how you describe them, but their their whole mission was to kind of terrorize the younger guys, right? Sure. Um, so Bullies. Went, huh? Bullies. Bullies. And so I was, at one stage I was sleeping, it was, uh, I was sleeping with that, I was sleeping with the older guys and I thought I was in with them oh. as a friend. Mm. But then the first night, uh, I remember I woke up and there was uh, one of them trying to shove their cock in my mouth and I right. was like, ah, get one off of these you know. types of And they'd be calling you gay while they're doing it. Yeah. You know, yeah, yeah, gay little bit. You know, yeah. and I'd be like, hey, what the fuck? <laughs> so anyway. <laughs> if you genuinely think that, you're actually being very nice to me right now. So that's yeah. kind of fucked up. 100%. Um, <laughs> you're doing me a huge favour. Yeah. Um, and Imagine you were like, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> or, you know, just... <laughs> So anyway, I ended up having to move out and seek refuge in the few cabins down the way. Um, just like they took me in like a refugee. Yeah. And uh, uh, I've been sexually assaulted in this cabin. I kind of yeah. been sexually yeah. assaulted in this cabin. Um, this is like a shelter that you were going to basically. Well, 100% with yeah. all the people, all the people from my year, the four years were in this place and they were kind of battening up the windows and stuff. Yeah. Like there was literally like being like little fucking gas grenades thrown in that we were pepper sprayed one night right, we had to come out yeah, crying yeah, people yeah. were fucking rinsing us with fucking Fuck pellet guns sake. it was lad it was fucking insane there was lads getting their fucking is this in like a kind of ski lodge type this of this is place? a ski lodge but also add on top of this everyone has just like weapons. their uh, weapons and are absolutely shit faced like, on cheap vodka as well. <laughs> it sounds like a game of James Bond for the PlayStation. Lad, you know, it, like Battle Royale, Lad, fucking... it was like Battle Royale. Like it was like it was kind of there, there was an a, an element of like the Hunger Games to it. Um, Goldeneye multiplayer. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, I think Lad. But anyway, so this was happening. People were getting shot up. People were getting like you know bet up. And then at one point. Um, we were in the older guys, we're in their cabin and you're never safe in there. And they decided they were going to prank the, the vice principal uh -huh. of our school. We'll call him for uh, the sake of legal reasons, Licky Ration. Right. So, uh, so we're calling up Licky Ration and I says, anyway, I says, y you can use my phone. I wanted to curry favor with my oppressors. You know, I was the Uden, Uden rat, I think the, the Jews would call the Jewish people who would, uh, <laughs> in the concentration camps would side right. with the, yes. The Stockholm Syndrome. That's right. Or people who would an basically, outdated, an outdated I'll help put right. these fuckers in the oven if you'd let me maybe stay around for a little longer. Right. Mm. So anyway, I says, oh, you can have my phone by Jesus. You're self-describing yourself as one of these. Types. Yes. Right. So I gives him my phone anyway um, to call up your man. So we call up the vice principal. He doesn't answer, but there's a voice message. So then anyway, we all shout in, ah, Russian sucks, cock, you stupid fucking. A lot of it was calling him gay and it was the time. Yeah. Um, hurt people, hurt people. Hurt people, like. hurt people, <laughs> essentially. So we call just a barrage, just every rotten thing you could possibly say. And uh, and because my number was on private, we thought this was this. Will, <laughs> this will, will have any idea? Who's, yeah, I'll who's never be able this. to trace this. Back. <laughs> also, if you just looked at where the call comes from, it's like and like he knows <laughs> the students on a trip. So anyway, uh, <laughs> so we call it this whole thing. Da, this da, da, is an Andorra da. number. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> 100%. So Who's calling me from Andorra this hour? Yeah, fucking cock sucking, stupid. Because so this guy obviously wasn't on the trip. He's no, back home in no. Ireland, but you yes. got his number from Kuru? No, where we got the number was uh, someone had discovered it and then uh, written it on a desk in one of our, in the, in the study area uh. for the school. So someone had found out his number and written it and one of the lads took it down. So they had it. So, um, Anyway, as the trip developed, the, when I turned 16 on the trip, they shaved off my eyebrows. Oh. And so my currying of favour didn't work. Yeah. They held me down, tried to shave gay into my head at one stage. It was yeah. quite a traumatic experience. There was like, people were being bet with batons. It was it was just insanity. It yeah. was just a, a wild time. And uh, But when I got back, anyway, I remember I was... Uh, so about five weeks later, I was on work experience in a mechanics up the road from mm -hmm. my farm, mm -hmm. working with a fella called Campion who uh, has, had no liking for me because I was, I was useless, useless with my hands and they just, I'd come in, they'd fucking, uh, they, they hate, like real men just hate us. <laughs> they just yeah. hate us. You know what I mean? 100%. Like they we're just, everything they, they can't connect what you know everything we say they frown at it's just yeah. Yeah. um so anyway i was there and next next <laughs> thanks thing I, for including me and your uh, 
Well, I I mean it's you clear. more you more than me. At least I can <laughs> like at least I can make shapes at being uh-huh. I grew up on a farm and uh, I yeah, played yeah. sport and yeah. everything, sure. I used to work in a hairdresser. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> cool. <laughs> uh but so anyway, I I'm I'm there and I get a call on my phone, right? And it's a number I don't recognise. Yeah. And so I answers the phone oh, no. and uh the phone says, Oh, they said, uh hello, um, uh, we're after finding uh, a phone and uh, here uh, I'm after finding a phone here and your number was the first number on the phone he says um, and I'm just wondering whose phone it is because I want to give the phone back to its originator and I said Jesus I don't have this number I don't know and he goes oh right right what's your name anyway I said uh, I said Michael Rice Michael Rice and he's like oh where do you live and, I'm, and I was just oh Greeners <laughs> Kilkenny and then he just, he just goes okay hangs up I get a call from my mother then being like, oh, the, the guards have just called the police and they want you to go in for a meeting on Monday. Uh. And in my head, I was like, oh, God. Um, what the fuck's this about? In my head, I was like, it's surely about the call. <laughs> the call that we did in Andorra. Yeah. So I get brought in to the guard station, get sat down with uh, two members of actually the drug unit. I don't know why they took it this year, see, and like locked the door. And they played the voice message yeah. for me. And they're like, this is come from your... Or you fucking suck cock, you dirty <laughs> fucking... And they're like, this is very serious. This is harassment. Yeah. This is sexual harassment. Wow. This is criminal. Like behavior, all this this stuff. And I just immediately started crying. <laughs> and I just had this, uh, you know, um, I made up this story that I had been just like blackout drunk and I can't remember. And they're, they're like, do you think we buy that? You think we're stupid? I, I don't think you're stupid. I think you're smart. <laughs> but I just and then they were basically like, "You need to, you need to fucking, you need to give us names. Yeah, you need to fucking <laughs> give us names of who those other people." And then they started trying to go cop. They're like, "We know this wasn't your idea. We know you were. We know what the Andorran ski lodge scene is like." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they start showing me like little like locations where they can have me live in the witness protection area. Mm-hmm. Nice love little place in County Tipperary mm-hmm. yeah. here. It's like it's got a little green garden at the back. Life, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We know you're not the ringleader, the guy yeah. with gay shaved on your face. Yeah. <laughs> and I literally had my eyebrows. <laughs> No eyebrows, Kate. <laughs> Must have been hard to do the good cop, bad cop thing where I yeah. cut with no eyebrows. Like, <laughs> yeah. I cannot get a read on this guy at all. Man. I'm just <laughs> immediately in tears as well, like just bawling. <laughs> so I was there, and anyway, and uh, so I don't crack, I don't give up anyone. Mm. I say, I'm no fucking rat. I can't do it. But in my head, I was like, sure, if I rot, what are they going to do to me then? Yeah. Um, it'll mean my ears are going to be taken off next. Yeah. So uh, so I get back to the school and I get a similar thing then. And then the vice principal, because he knows then that I've done it. So I'm, I'm getting suspended. And I get brought into the principal's office and he basically tells me if, if no one else comes forward, you're getting expelled right. for it. Yeah. Um, so I basically had to go to the other guys who were involved and I went to a load of them and I was just like, I ain't getting kicked out of school if some of you don't come forward about this. Like, that's what's happening. And to be fair to them, I felt like Gilly and Owen Brett, out a load of them that did it, mm. came forward and like, took the rap with me. Yeah. Um, and I ended up getting off. I, like, not getting off, I got suspended, but I didn't get fucking... Expelled. Expelled. Um, Jimmy Crew died a week later. <laughs> and it was the end of an era. Did he actually? Yeah. What's that laughing about? I'm sorry for laughing at Jimmy Crew. It doesn't sound like the only exp- you probably have fun. That is a Jimmy very Crew. Irish fucking full stop on that story. <laughs> <laughs> he died a and week he later. Died a week later. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I remember when I was a young boy, the clown came round, and he died a week later. <laughs> Any stories? Some cunts died a week later. Then, Wow. I, uh, sorry to laugh about Jimmy Crew. Well, no, there, I mean, it's just it does. It doesn't sound like he was a like, great. No, he was a good man. Authority thing. He wasn't a good authority at that stage, but he was a, sure he used to be he used to be going up on crutches at the time and uh you know he was just not he was not he was not capable of no. you know I don't we, think he should have been allowed in charge of the trip to Andorra. 
Well, no one was disputing that. Chris. No, <laughs> no. <laughs> the way, the way the time. At the time, but people kind of saw it as you know Jimmy's last hurrah, one last, hurrah. One, last, one, last yeah. one last, and they were fucking right. Wrong. The of that. And they were dead fucking right. <laughs> yeah. And poor old Jimmy. Uh, but like I, I remember at the fucking on the trip. I like, think on some level the trouble that you and Brett and that got into sh- some of that should have been yeah laid at at, at, at the dying hand the, the dying feet of that guy you know. Well, we could have let the if we were lesser men, we could have let the we could we could have let the blame go with, down with the coffin of Jim Carew. But you're not. But we're not. You good guy. We're not, and we didn't want to fucking soil his name. Twas we who did it. But I mean, looking back on that trip to Andorra, I mean. <laughs> There wasn't even that much skiing done. No. No. <laughs> Does it sound like it? Do you know what I mean? There was lads, there was lads shitting themselves left, right and centre. It was just, it was... Cheap vodka will do that to a 17-year-old man. It truly know? was a journey into the heart of darkness, just the dark yeah. side of, especially teenage. Oh. Because there's no greater cruelty than that inside of a 16, 17-year-old boy. Yeah. That's when you're at your least empathetic You've in life. You come and hate roaring through your oh. veins. Christ. Talk a bit toxic masculinity. Oh, <laughs> fuck me. Peak. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We also had it once, because our, our school days were absolutely, there was a wildness in them, especially our first three years in secondary school. How far did you live from a school? So I suppose I was like half an hour Aye, right. driver okay. or something. And that's right. in what, Kilkenny proper or something? Yeah, so that's right in the centre of the Aye, city yeah. of Kilkenny. Now, sure. the city's a generous term, but it was a Aye. small town. But we had, when I was in second year, and I was still to this day, I would rank it as the greatest day of my life. We had a riot. What? <laughs> we had a riot in the school. <laughs> you used the batons you bought in fucking Andorra, did you? <laughs> well, this was before Andorra. Batons were only a dirty thought in our head at that stage. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but I, I imagine, you know, in a rural community, there's no, you get a, a lack of weapons. You get, you know. Oh, no. You get the tools of the trade. There's shovels, there's pitchforks, and there's. Uh, there's a want to use them yeah. in a in an unkind Stick way. Someone. Yeah, hundred percent. But this riot, <laughs> we were led by a a man named Cowman. 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 <laughs> he was a man that was a cow. It's a minotaur. M- Matty Cowman. He was a great man, and he was a sort of a, I suppose a revolutionary leader at the time, and he took a lot of the brunt for it. But we came back from school basically from lunch, and it was coming at two o'clock. And Cowman had lined up a a kind of a, an assortment of hard chaws and ne'er do wells, and they were on the the back pitch of Kieran's our school, and they were there with a bower on, mm. and they were going, dun, 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 and suddenly just every student in the school, just like moths to a flame, started fucking drifting towards this group, and suddenly there was hundreds of us gathered on the pitch. Uh-huh. Now it was it, for some reason uh, I found out later it was in protest of the fact that we were supposed to have a non-uniform day <laughs> on a Friday and they'd revoked it. They, <laughs> so we said to wear a uniform, and this was kind of a stand being made. Yeah. So what ends up happening anyway is it's coming as the the clock is turning towards two o'clock where we have to go back to class. Yeah. There's this kind of feverish excitement around. <laughs> and we start to think. We are not going fucking anywhere. Yeah. We're not going back to fucking class. There's more of them than there is. A There's more of them. There's strength in numbers. Less here. of them. Sorry. Less of them, <laughs> aye. So next thing anyway, the fucking uh, clock strikes fucking two. We all look around. No one moves. And we're all just fucking filled with this. Because you realise, that's right. We don't have to go to fucking class. Mm. We don't have to do fucking anything. So next thing... The teachers come out and they're like, hey, everybody into class. And we look at each other, we say, oh, fuck that cowman. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> he has his tie wrapped around his head at this stage. Where did they get a ward from? Huh? Where did they get a ward well, from? Well, it's a bow on. It's a bow on, which can obviously be can second as a ward drum, <laughs> you know. And yeah. cowman knew that. <laughs> <laughs> he, had, he had always known. Um, so next thing anyway, the teachers come out to try to get us back in. And yeah. cowman just shouts, Charge! And because the size of the school, there's all these different hurling pitches. So we just legged it. We ran past like the teacher and we just all just fucking piled on, right? And ran down to the other end of the field. Now at this stage, more teachers come out. And we started to find out that some teachers had been kind of as excited about this day coming as we had been. Those teachers came out with two fucking hurls in their hands and they're like, ah, like trying to fucking wheel us back in. I swear to yeah, God, yeah. we had a, a fella called Pinky Kwan. 
uh, who was a teacher at the school. He was None a, of these names sound like names, by the way, that you've said today. And they didn't really at the time either, Mark. <laughs> and it like was kind of, Kwan. it kind of added to the, the fantasy and magic at the time. Mm. But he came out, he's, I remember he was just like, I'll fucking get you bastards. Right? So he was there wh- wheeling the fucking hurls like nunchucks. And... Uh, <laughs> He's doing that. We were running. There was a fucking, there was a female teacher and I'm ashamed to say Miss Hennessy that. Uh, Miss Hennessy? Yeah, she came out and by Jesus, there was a fella, we'll call him Heater Shady for the sake of legal reasons. And sure didn't the greedy hand of Shady lower down in the heat of battle and grab Miss Hennessy's arse. You can't grab an arse. And it wasn't, no, it wasn't right. A war crime. <laughs> and it's a war crime, that. It was a war crime that was opportunistic and that. history hasn't been yeah. kind to Shady. No. And it was Shreed, a different time, but, you know. He's a family now and he's he's manager of a restaurant and all the rest, but sure, people still see him as a, an arse grabbing near do it. But, Anyway, so there's things like that happened. There was kind of a breakdown in law and order and morality, it seemed as well. Because of a non-uniform day? Huh? Because of, a, Cause non- of uniform. a non-uniform day. But that was just seen as a symbol of, uh, you know, a, an oppressive regime, as it yeah. were. So anyway, we went down. We, we kept running across at this stage. I'd never been more exhilarated in my life. Just a sheer fuck off of it all. Just fuck you. Yeah. And the strength and numbers of it. And it kind of ended up in like we ended up burning our ties. Uh, the, the vice principal came out. A few cowards uh, got afraid and uh, went back in. Uh. Went back in to shine the shoes of the teachers. And <laughs> people never forgot the names of the people who did it. <laughs> John John Muldowney, I won't forget what you did. You turned your back on the movement. You hear that, John? I, I don't care if you were 13 years old. That's What's the, he up to these days? Huh? What's he up to these days? Your Facebook friends with him? Well, sure. I No, I certainly am not. There was, that was, there was no going back from that. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. You don't fucking, you don't abandon a movement like that and think you're going to uh, live to tell the tale. You're a fucking coward. You're Benedict Arnold. Pick your poison. And if this was the War of Independence, you would have turned towards the Tans. Mm. And we know that. Mm. So anyway, it went on and we, we ended up, we were burning our ties and uh, Licky Ration, who was from the other story as well, he came out, he thought he'd, you know, uh, hit the gravitas of him being the vice principal would um, kind of uh, inspire some sort of subservience in us, but sure he couldn't have been more wrong. We all started chant, chanting, Ration socks, cock, Ration socks, cock, like just a whole. He had hundreds of students yeah, just, yeah. and he stood there, I remember, with his arms on his hips. <laughs> You get PTSD at that phone call. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I just remember him absorbing just hundreds of students chanting yeah. at him. Could this is a grown man? Yeah, do you know what I mean? Yeah, this yeah. is a man who's gets up every morning and puts on a tie, and he's just sheer and utter. You suck, up. and he just he breathe he breathed it in, Aye. and he just went, and he just had to <laughs> walk back inside, <laughs> and. As it went on, so we never went back to class that day. And Cowman now, for his <laughs> sins, had kind of singled himself out by with the bower on. And then at one stage, a fella called, we'll call him Silly Holster, mm-hmm. a gym teacher, came out. Another man who'd been a 30-year veteran of the school. Semi-tennis pro. Not a good thing to be. Uh, huh? Not a good thing Not to be. necessarily, no. Um, but he'd drive a jag to school. There was a real <laughs> class because he, he used to run a tennis school as well. So there's right. a few teachers who'd have little side jobs and they'd be making extra cash and they'd rub it in the face of the other fucking poor Joe Soaps who, who didn't have a pot to piss in. But uh, So Silly Holster came out and sure didn't. Cowman, he turned on a dime, dropped his trousers and... Uh, showed his bare arse to Silly Holster <laughs> to the gym teacher he spread open his arse cheeks and let him see the whole really? the, the crown jewels yeah. yeah and his little balls hanging down like a Shetland pony in the back mm. and uh, that was seen as the the nail in Cowman's coffin <laughs> so <laughs> Cowman <laughs> so fucking Cowman ended up then taking the fucking taking the heat for all of us yeah. Fidel Castro <laughs> <laughs> the cowman missile crisis. <laughs> <laughs> oh fuck! Uh, and he died a week later. And he died a week. He became beef man. He oh, became yeah. beef man. But uh, cowman now is uh, he's still but see much like still showing his ass to 
He's Dreamt it, Jesus. He's still. <laughs> and to be fair now, the, yeah, it hasn't served him well. No. Um, but no, Cowman, as much as uh, the deserters are still remembered to this day, we'll still remember, if I'd see Cowman on the street now, I'd go up, shake his hand, and I'd say... I'll never forget what you did for us that day. <laughs> and in a lot of ways, it was Cowman kind of uh, leading the way. Now, since then, you know, Cowman's, you know, I, I, I assume he's, he's he's got into a lot of gambling debt. I don't know. But <laughs> you, gotta assume. you have to assume. Um, he liked to flutter. Uh, <laughs> but Cowman, there's something now in the way what he did there and that breaking of just convention and the fearlessness and the anti-establishmentness of it all. You know, it's probably some of the spirit of Cowman that allowed me to start doing comedy and really, move to Chicago and, yeah. Well, it's interesting because you moved to Chicago, but you lived in Barcelona. 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 Yes. And you lived in Berlin. I did. And you were in Amsterdam for a wee bit. I haven't, I wasn't in Amsterdam. I've, I've spent, I've gigged a lot in Amsterdam. Yeah, yeah, because um, I've seen over there. Where, where, yeah. where, where, where is this streak in you? Well, do you know what it was? The the Barcelona thing was basically um the Barcelona thing was because I had been I went home after lockdown yeah. and I was back living home with my my parents and my girlfriend at the time came with me and we'd only been going out maybe for five months, so her moving in with my parents when we can't leave the house wasn't given what I know about your family. Yeah. That's fucked. It was <laughs> fucked. So who's that guy in that cow's eye over there? That's right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, Maurice, that's Henry Monk. <laughs> and uh, if you could bring him out this little yeah. bowl of butter, <laughs> that'll go a long way. Oh. Uh, so, uh, so anyway, fucking, uh, she comes back anyway, and it's back. And it was just intense. It was just not. Yeah. It was not a situation set up for success. And I remember, like, she kind of started. Do you know what? She kind of making alliances with family members <laughs> that I wasn't involved in. So then I, you know, it was kind of just. It's a head of, fuck. Yeah, it's a head fuck. And I got weird and I was paranoid. Like her and my father were like, you know, just this odd. They had this little, like, it became a non verbal relationship where she would like. <laughs> She's she, phoning Frank Grace and all <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. That's the greatest Frank Grace callback I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> That's unfair to your dad. They were both on the fucking <laughs> team calls with Frank Grace. <laughs> the three to one zero. Can I? Can yeah. I? Oh. <laughs> What's more important, nature or nurture? <laughs> uh, so, uh. but she was over. So she anyway. She is there, but she gained this snog. My father loves sweets, so she'd be like shaking little box. He loves mm-hmm. these Mikado biscuits. They're like oh. fluffy yeah, cocoa, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And so she'd be shaking them at me. And he He'd be like rubbing his belly in a kind of an odd kind of a way, and <laughs> uh, and I kicked it. There was this one point where like it was so weird because she one of her bits she would do like in the house we had a dog called Grizzly and she'd go yeah gorgeous Grizzly yeah gorgeous right she'd say that to Grizzly she thought it was funny and uh, I was a bit of a laugh but um, <laughs> but anyway one day because fundamentally dogs are not gorgeous so yeah, it's kind yeah they're of not a silly thing so but anyway one day she's in there and like Grizzly was there she goes yeah gorgeous yeah gorgeous and my father thought he was talking to her oh. or talking to him and he just goes well sure, Jesus I think you're fairly pretty and then I was like, you know, what level would she be calling you gorgeous? Which, no offence to him, but like he's never been called gorgeous Shake in his life. Shake his hands, this guy. <laughs> Absolutely. Scarlett Johansson's gorgeous. My father is alive at best. So, <laughs> anyway, does this, and then one time, this is the weirdest thing that happened in that whole little scenario. One time my father came down, we, we were going to my brother's for dinner, who had just house up the road. My father came down kind of looking nice. He dressed himself up and... Uh, my girlfriend says, oh, she says you're looking uh, well to him. And he turned around and he said to her, he said, well, he said, Maurice, he said, the older the flute, the sweeter the tune. <laughs> the older the flute, the sweeter the tune. Yeah. He's basically telling her he has a nice cock. No. Yes. <laughs> no. Yes. <laughs> he was. Oh, he, 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 he's good at using it anyway. Huh? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, hundred yeah. percent. Flute, Fuck. we call in Ireland, we call... Like that. That's what we call your flute. Hello, flute. Wow. We call your willy your flute. Is this like, an anti-orangeman thing? Well, it's certainly. You've all got cocks in your mouth. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Ex- there you go. Potentially, there's potentially actually an anti. I never even thought of it like that. 
But so anyway, I ended up moving and I fucked off to. So that your dad didn't fuck your girlfriend. He could have, to be honest. <laughs> I not. I don't want to look into it. But they're living together now in Toulon. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I got a flat share with old yeah. friends. <laughs> yeah. So, but anyway, five months. Anyway, so I, things with me and her kind of ended up ending. So I moved to um, Barcelona and I, I moved in with a fella called uh, Maxi, an Argentinian uh, How did flat you know earther. Him? Huh? How did you know him? I'm sure I didn't. I moved in with, <laughs> as an Airbnb for a few right. days and. <laughs> He said, would you like to stay? Uh-huh. He said, because we'd kind of gotten on well. He was a big, he was a big druggie. Big and flat earther, this guy? Yeah, and COVID was a hoax. He refused to wear a mask. He, right. uh, it was all about 5G in the brain. Mm. Um, they're, you know, they're trying to fuck us up all this shit. Um, but it was good for me at the time. I was going through, you know, I, there was one, I was, you know, I was ball, crying and bawling a lot with the breakup. Oh. And one day, one night I was on the phone, tier one, and I was like, really like, and he was outside the door. He's like, Mike, he's like, are you okay? Are you okay? And like, uh, You're not taking you know, the vaccine in there, are you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is what it does to you, Mikey. You mustn't take it. Come on. <laughs> Mikey. Imagine that's why you were crying. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, boy. I can't get this at me. <laughs> I've destroyed my own body. Uh... So and I remember he, he came out anyway. It's just it's cry. Uh, 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 you know that real like just ugly. Can't get a breath. Yeah. <laughs> and then he like puts his little head in and he goes, oh, he's like, Mikey, what, what is the problem? And I said, uh, this girl that says her break up. And, uh, and he goes, oh, he said, come on. He says, this girl, they come, they go. He says, this is the life, huh? <laughs> this is the life, you know. C'est la vie. C'est la vie. <laughs> Come on, come in here. We have beer. You like mushroom? He had all these mushrooms. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was like, no, nah, no, I don't do that. Make it worse. He's like, oh, yes. And he's just <laughs> laughing at me. Yeah, like yeah. in a boy in a nice way. You know, he's like, <laughs> he was laughing at. It's the, like when a child over falls. Yeah. yeah. The parent can't, you know, scream as well. That's you right. You need to be calm. Mm-hmm. And- yes. He was laughing at it. And the laughing made me feel like, because he's like, He's like, I know, I know, you think this is the end of the world, but no, there'll be more girls, you know. <laughs> they will be nicer, bigger. This is not the end of the world, which, by the way, is flat. <laughs> <laughs> this is not the end of the flat world. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. It just shows you uh, they get a bit of sense of it, even these guys, you know, they get, you know, it's oh, not, you know, 100%, 100%. Percent. He used to do this thing with the, he was very, because he, he had a daughter called Lua. Now he was broken up with the mother because she had enough of his old nonsense. But, uh, <laughs> there are more, I approve. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, he, anyway, but he used to, because they were, they had no money, like none at all. But Lua uh, would stay with him every second week, but he's a great father because he was up to nothing. He'd be, so he'd be yeah. painting with her and they'd be dancing. And you know what I mean? It was fucking, it was real nice, you know? Yeah, you need to be Argentinian to get away with that kind yeah, of power. Hundred, you, you can't, can't just be, you have yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't see you very often, yeah. but I like to I'm do the Mr. Bryce. I'm Mr. Bryce. <laughs> we got a little world of our own. <laughs> 100% but the Latins they can you know they're yeah, like yeah. It seems, <laughs> 100% but he they, they used to go down and play a game with their one of the big games they'd play and they'd love to play is they'd get bottles mm. empty bottles beer mm. bottles and they'd go down to the the bottle bank you bring her down to the bottle bank and the game they'd play because he'd drink a lot of bottles of beer you see so they'd, <laughs> they'd have to get rid of the bottles yeah. he's a I was a boozy Susan. he was the man was a lush but uh, so they go down to the bottle bank and then we, in the little window, you'd have to fuck the bottle in. And whoever broke the bottle, you get one point. Mm-hmm. So then they'd play a little game where they'd fuck the bottles in and try break them and they'd count the points and everything. Yeah. And then one day I got to come down and play the game with them. Yeah. And on the face of it, it's a shite game. Mm-hmm. But like she really loved the game. Yeah. And he was very excited having it with her. And I thought, you don't really need that much. There's a thrill. Yeah. Two smashing bottles. Yeah, absolutely. There's a thrill. And, and you think, and she was nine years, she was like nine and she's still in that phase where she wasn't embarrassed by him yet. Mm. That was probably going to come soon and I felt a sadness about that. <laughs> you know. <laughs> with your own relationship with, you know. Yeah. So no, I was like, no, oh, you know. you're going to, you're not going to want to talk to this lad. Just yeah. throwing rope. Like your, your, your leisure time's based around getting rid of the rubbish. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. That's going to end. Beautiful. Um, but I ended up falling out with Maxie in the end. 
And then he died, of course. <laughs> <laughs> we glare on that. He died. We glare on that. Forgive yeah. me, Mike, right, but we didn't yeah. actually get to you moving to America. Oh, I don't fuck. know what else. Not that I, it was great, some great tangents, but yeah, I, I am I will. curious so, about your sign there. So, the, the, uh, the, the, <laughs> what happened with the American thing and how I ended up going, I ended up, after I did commerce, I worked in a call centre for a year as well, um, and I really wanted to kill myself. I hated it. Yeah. It is shocking. Yeah. It's, it's, it's three, three lads who've been driven to madness. By I mean, I was only there for two weeks. You know? There's nothing that will drive you more towards doing what you want in life than <laughs> working in a fucking call centre. Yeah. Because um, it was just, it was fucking bleak. And to think there were some people that were there years. Yeah. And, it, and, and the spark of life, I remember that Robin Williams quote, you know, you're born with a spark of madness and you have to try to keep that. Arguably, you know? he had too much. It didn't... A lot of people I end up quoting kill themselves. <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah, like, a week later after they <laughs> said that quote. <laughs> Go on. <laughs> he was found, found hanging from the Golden Gate Bridge. But, uh... <laughs> so, anyway... Uh, but... Uh, you no, know, I know what you mean. But people in the call centres, that old spark is after fucking, yeah, yeah. you know, leaving the eyes a while ago. That was the first time I've seen someone vape in there. And uh, I've not vaped because I yeah. associate vaping with the, the call centre. I know. It, it, Coping there, mechanism. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> but so I was in there and I'd gotten to a point, I was very depressed in my early 20s. I had a few things going on. I was fucking... I couldn't, I get, I, I I hadn't taken off sexually yet. I, I was, you know, I, I, I would You're get a late super, bloomer. Mm-hmm. I was a late bloomer and I get super nervous in those situations. So I wouldn't, I get too nervous. I wouldn't be able to get it up. And I thought I was never going to have sex and I was depressed and all these other things. But that deep depression then led to a, a kind of a freedom of, you know, I was like, I'm so miserable. I might as well just do whatever the fuck I want to do yeah. you know what I mean yeah. and just treat life like a video game because I don't really feel like being here anyway so why don't I just fucking just do whatever I want to do so I felt I was given a great freedom by that yeah. depression yeah. or that like you know I had the exact same thing Um, yeah I said I'm going to try stand up yeah I'm going to join a band yeah and I'm going to get into wrestling <laughs> And I'll try those three. And if I if I try those three things, and I still don't enjoy being in life, I'll kill myself. Yeah, but I tried all three of them, and I was like, oh, you can just do stuff you like. And I think I've often think that people who are just middlingly happy, that they'll never take a big risk because they just you need to almost you're content. Yeah, yeah the good be, is the enemy of the great. They say that's right. Mm. That's hundred percent right mm-hmm. because. It's almost that you need to be that just f- like foot to the floor, Fuck it. flat out, fucked. <laughs> like this is, yeah. I cannot condone this yeah. at all. I yeah. cannot tolerate this life. Yeah. This is shocking. So I went and then I played to a master's in film. That was my first real move towards. Now, no one I'd ever known in my whole life. I grew up on a farm. Everyone uh, I knew from both sides of the family, no one had ever done anything artistic ever. Mm. And my whole basis of doing a master's in film was I like movies. That was it. Mm. I'd never done that. I'd never been in theatre. I'd never been in film clubs. I'd never... How did you, know, you get for James Bond to that? Uh, <laughs> you don't let this point see James from Bond. The gym, because I just kind of... Once we got the internet and you could watch oh, any yes. movie. Oh, yeah. Download yeah. that in LimeWire. Down, download that. And me and my brothers... So my older brother Pat is a massive... He's a bigger cinephile than I am. Mm. He watches every fucking Korean... Like Eastern European cinema, he watches. You know, he's just and again, I don't know where he got. Neither of my parents are like that. Mm-hmm. None, none of our family really are like yeah. that. I don't know. And then my little brother is an actor now. So, yeah. um, uh, you know, my parents are upset. Um, <laughs> yeah. Oh no, you know, he's going to your dad should have just fucking married whoever he wanted because he's not going to have a hundred percent. It couldn't have went worse for him. Um, <laughs> so it couldn't have backfired more. Um, but so, but so then when I. Uh, I did, so I went and I did the Masters in Film. This is the first time I actually got, was very important for me, is I got away from my friends. 
Right. And this was very important for me because I'm a real people pleaser. And there's a. Mike, these guys who were shaving gay in your head, they weren't your friends, man, you know? They were my brothers. <laughs> <laughs> the brothers, family, man. You had to leave no. Cowman and Co. alone. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, Cowman, Cowman can't be blamed. Cowman was innocent. <laughs> but so uh, I got away from it. Now, the thing was, I was a. Uh, I'd always. Battled with, not battled with as if it's heroin addiction, but I was a people <laughs> pleaser. Right. Do you know what I mean? I want people to like me. There's a great uh, quote from a film critic called Roger Ebert that says, uh, if you're popular in high school, which I did, I had friends in secondary school, but a lot of people that are popular in high school never find out who they really are because you oh. get used to the feeling of being liked. Uh-huh. Yeah. And that's a very hard thing to ever turn your back on or risk losing by going your own way and doing things. So I was always afraid if I, I'd always want to do acting. I'd always want to do shit like that. And I was afraid because I was played sport and all did the, all these things. I was with a group of my friends and I was afraid that they turn around and call me gay or they wouldn't like me, blah, blah. So I was very in danger of just going through my whole life and not doing what I wanted. Mm. Um, so once I got depressed enough, I just was like, well, fuck this. And I exactly just fuck off. I went, and what's nothing to do with them? I'm still friends with my friends. They're great friends, but oh, yeah, sure. it was all to do with myself mm-hmm. that I felt I couldn't, I felt suffocated. And that you're just the same, you're friends with the same people you're friends with since you're 12. So you're stuck in a role. That how they you, see you. Yeah, how they see you in yeah. the group. And I got to a point where I didn't want to be that anymore. I didn't mm-hmm. want to play that part. Yeah. That they, the person they felt I was, I was sick of it. Um, so I fucked off, lived on my own, never been happier when I was doing that. I was just listening to podcasts all day. I started listening to that WTF podcast. Oh, remember yeah, Mark, Mark Martin, Martin yeah. Which I fucking loved. The early days of that was yeah, unreal. Yeah. I was listening to podcasts. I was watching these fucking Will Smith motivational videos. <laughs> Do you remember those ones? Holding the, the bricks. Yeah. The, the, yeah, the wall. 100%. Yeah, 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 yeah. Lads. He knocks in the wall. You yeah. build it brick by brick or that shit. 100%. Yeah, 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 yeah. And he was like, <laughs> the, he was like, the biggest... Uh, obstacle in the way of achievement is being realistic. Why would you be realistic? He's like, yeah. if the Wright brothers were real, being realistic, would they have flown a piece of metal across the sky? No, yeah. don't be real. So that was, he was actually just overcompensating for his unhappy marriage. But <laughs> little did we know he was a deluded cook. Yeah. Everyone, <laughs> everyone we've taken advice from either yeah. kills themselves. <laughs> Or and a week later, he slapped Chris Rock. <laughs> yeah, or their wife shags yeah. a young rapper. Either yeah. one, um, <laughs> she was shagging a lot. Yeah, uh, but so I remember then. So anyway, yeah, w- when I was there, so I was doing a thing with film. I joined a radio station in that college. I'd never done that in the first time I was in college. All mm. I did was drink. And where is this? Dublin or something? Dublin, Dublin. Uh. And the first time, all I did was blackout drink for three years. I was horribly depressed. Looking back, how would you not be depressed? Mm. It was just, I would say I blacked out like a hundred, I was just waking up on the side of the street. It just, insane drinking. Mm. The way we were drinking, we used to drink a nag and a vodka and eight cans, mm. like eight pints before we would leave the house. Mm. We were just, fought, like not even a whiff of pulling a woman either. It was just, the bot, like, chasing oblivion. Chasing oblivion, yeah, Ash, yeah. drinking ourselves into nappies, as we'd say. Yeah, yeah. Um, I love the term naggins, by the way. It's like a half yeah. bottle, isn't it? Yeah. A vodka, or, yeah, yeah. Uh, and it was just sometimes we down naggins before we go into places, and then you just yeah. be in there. You, 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 that fuck. plate, I remember that place you'd done your French show this year, your work in progress show, and I was like, yeah. I glassed the guy in here. <laughs> you know, because at yeah. uh, that time the guy started in, and what is that, George, George yeah. Street. Just a fucking guy was like, oh my f- I got away from my friends and then this guy fucking drank my drink and I was like, what the fuck you do, man? You know, people just felt they could take the... You glass that guy? Yeah. Is this when you're trying to be a wrestler? No, it was before that. <laughs> <laughs> the wrestling allowed me to stop glassing people. <laughs> yeah, so if you glass them and then the music, <laughs> doom, no, 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 no. I'm just a sexy boy. Sexy. CMB sexy. I glass off this oh. guy's face. But, um, the we'll most do. electrifying move in Scotland. Scottish entertainment. Oh, right. I want to get to Mike going yeah. to America. Oh, yeah. Say. So, and I'll just get finished because I, I understand we're probably, we're probably on it. Yeah. As but, you, you're the one that's on a tight yeah. schedule, I think. Yeah. You need but to get so, back to Glasgow. <laughs> oh, fuck. We'll get back soon. You're okay. not opening now. But so, uh, anyway, I ended up going to Chicago because I started, I did improv, uh, I started doing improv classes in Dublin, um, which I, I like comic acting was what I first wanted to I would love to have been like Will Ferrell or Ben Stiller mm-hmm. I thought that was the funniest you've shit you've not ever. done stand up at this point ha, no I've not done stand up at this point point. and then I was doing the that fucking so I was doing that improv I was already in 
studying film and it was already become very clear how useless that was going to be uh, <laughs> just truly useless there was no even the one practical module got cancelled because not yeah. enough people signed up right. so it was just all about like semiotics in 1920s German silent film the signified yeah. and the signified yeah it, it is some load of cock but I was enjoying it though I was um, I watched a nine hour holocaust documentary in a row Shoah mm. we watched it in one know. sitting yeah. just nine hours and that was fucking bleak but, going? oh it, but I, I loved yeah, the misery yeah, of it yeah. just <sighs> there's actually a part where a guy who you, he cut his family's hair before they were being put in the gas chamber yeah. and he couldn't tell them that that's where they were going because they were being watched and then he went back after the holocaust and just continued cutting hair like he was just a barber so he's actually being interviewed on the film cutting people's hair it's fucking grim Jeez. like good god yeah. but anyway um but so I did it. So when I was doing improv, I, I met a fellow who was doing stand up, and he said, uh, "He said, oh, uh, he said, oh, I do stand up. Like, How do you do on them gigs?" And he just gave me a number of a guy. Mm. Just message that guy, and he'll give you a date for a gig. So just message the guy. He gave me a date. It was like in six weeks, um, and I thought coming up to it, like I was very cocky. <laughs> I remember thinking because I went and watched a few open mics, and I was been like. I'm going to be so good. I saw Stevie the, f the week before I did Red Raw for the first time. Did I you? saw Stevie do Red Raw and I seen another guy who I won't name and I just went, I can do this. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not scared. Because well, yeah. you've seen Steve? No, another guy. <laughs> <laughs> Steve was good. I was like, oh, you see, I could do something like that. Yeah, I, I wish I, I would like to be as good. He was yeah. what I was aiming for. Yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah. But that's another guy. I was like, okay, I, I can do this. Yeah. yeah. I was 100% the same. There was nothing more motivating than seeing someone be pure dog shit. Mm -hmm. And you're like, I'll fucking... I'll rattle this. So I went up this, and... You're still in Dublin at this point. I'm still in Dublin. Uh -huh. So I went up, I did my first gig, drank six pints before I went on. <laughs> uh, <laughs> went up, toasted, did, did a whole seven minutes about fucking... Uh, did a whole seven minutes about hipsters. We don't even say hipsters anymore, uh -huh. but back then that was a thing in Dublin hipsters. Um, I'd say I got two laughs in seven minutes. Um, and I thought that was a fucking rousing success because I was scuttered drunk so I came off I was like that's fucking good and I remember saying to my friend on my way back we were walking back my friend came with me my friend Ed Murphy and I was like I'll just do this forever now then Ed died there a week later <laughs> but uh, I said I'll do this forever now and I remember my first seven gigs were probably over about a five month period because it was hard to get Traction. Up in that time yeah. or traction and they were all like seven minute sets and mm. I would do different seven minutes every time because I didn't realise you're yeah, repeating yeah. material yeah. and I wouldn't talk to anyone either I wouldn't talk to anyone so I come up and do and after seven gigs I believed and I sat down and I added up and I was like I have 50 minutes of material now <laughs> I should get this recorded. <laughs> and you can watch Mike's special. Yeah. <laughs> on <YouTube>. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I genuinely, I swear, contacted a videographer to record a special Fuck. after seven gigs. <laughs> and no joke. And I didn't have, I genuinely, I didn't have one minute. I didn't have a minute. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. And I remember an American comic saying that when I was living in Chicago, he's like, if someone after after just like two years or three years tells you they have an hour of material, they don't have one minute. Yeah. Like that's what yeah. they, yeah. they have no quantification yeah. of how. So I didn't have one minute. And that's, but I also remind myself that when I'm like, think of people who are not like comedy savvy and be like, oh, they don't get. And I was like, why would they get yeah, yeah, any of this shit? We're so entrenched in it. We forget. There's no reason to understand any of this stuff. And I then I have to remind myself, you try you wanted to record a special yeah. after seven gigs. Yeah, Amazing. seven gigs. And you thought, and I thought, we'll just do it in DCU. Mm. And I didn't even think, the, the, the idea of how would people come didn't even, I was like, they'll come. Yeah. People if will I'm come. I'm filming it, they'll come. <laughs> <laughs> oh, amazing! Yeah, really incredible. Yeah. Um, and then that that same year, I I, I moved to Chicago because yeah. of the because it's a big improv scene. Because it was a big improv scene, and then so I was like, I'm gonna go do Second City, do all that shit, uh, and it's gonna be fucking sick. And then I started doing stand up when I was there as well. All right, I I did stand up as well, and then I just I much preferred the people doing stand up. And I much preferred the vibe. And then I just, I got weird anxiety always with improv. Because oh, I get I get, real bad anxiety. I get improv. bad anxiety because in my head, and this is a, a wrong way of thinking, but like when I'm doing stand up, I'm like, 
I will live or die in whether this does good and I can live with that. But in improv, I'm like, I'll oh, fuck this up for everyone. Mm. And it, I just, I don't know why, oh, no. I always found it way more nerve wracking than stand up. Mm. When I'd done acting, I was always just like, I'm going to ruin everything. And I did. So it was <laughs> <laughs> Seven, there was a, a German girl who was studying theatre at Glasgow Uni and she yeah. was like, can you come in? I was like, oh yeah, I'm an actor. And then, I ruined her final project and she had to go back to Germany. Like, you know, it's like real fucked. Sorry, sorry, Francesca. If you I just there, imagine man, you coming in like fucking Al Pacino, like just like <laughs> she's got a big ass, and you're just like, just like she's like, no, this is you are just a no, shopkeeper. This is this a this movement is, piece. Yes, <laughs> like, Stella, <laughs> the inches are all around us. <laughs> He's been watching too much wrestling. It's all over the top. <laughs> Why are you holding that mic here? <laughs> <laughs> oh fuck so, and, uh, and so uh, I moved to uh, Chicago and uh, and I remember just to, you know it was very because I, I forget now because you're so far into comedy yeah. do you know and we've all made that uh, choice a long time ago now that we forget just how mental a thing it is that we're able to make a living from it or do it it's just so yeah. insane it's like when we were like three years in there was this wee guy and he, he, he dropped out of college He'd done like a couple of open spots and he was all right. Yeah. He dropped out of college and I remember being like, I was talking to you, I was like, man, this guy, I don't know if he knows what he's done. And you went, that's what you did. <laughs> <laughs> you just done it like a year, a year ago. <laughs> I was like, I know, but he's fucked. And he was, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's like, yeah. you know, you, you need to be a special kind of mental. Like. But you forget how precarious I think it was then and how, how unlikely it would have been for any of us oh. at that time it felt. And, and most of the people, where we're at now. the most people that you start with are not doing it now. Mm. Um, uh, and like looking back, like you know, if you because you know to 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 spend your twenties, which I did, the way I did, mm-hmm. is insane. Like, and just most people wouldn't want to do it. Like, I'm not around any of the weekends. I'm up every night. I'm waiting around for hours at open mics. I, you know. It's so antisocial, the amount of bombing, the humiliation. I'm getting five hour buses. I can't, I'm sleeping at bus station. It's just like, yeah. just why would anyone do it? Like, it's just, yeah. but to, to have the, that deep thing inside you of just like, well, this is still better for me than working at the call center. Yeah, yeah. 100%. You don't get that if you're the heir to a biscuit fortune. You know? 100%. 100%. Yeah. Someone's phone. Is that my is phone? It, it, oh, I'd say that's my. Oh, it's the glee call. I, the I better fucking go yeah. anyway. I know, I know. Yeah. <laughs> well, do you know what? I think Just that was a nice sentiment yeah, to, yeah. to end on anyway. Shut up, phone. <laughs> Quiet, you. That's Sorry. not your vice pr- yeah. principal. <laughs> I just opened up, man. I've just got cowboy feet hey, on my no, phone. Man. Imagine like, that was your vice principal well, call. Hello? <laughs> call from Andorra. I'm all right, Oscar. I'm down in Glasgow, lad. Yeah, you can have to leave. Yeah, no bother. All right, lad. Bye, 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 bye. Cut's getting phoned up by a comedy club in London. Going, can you? He's not even in fucking Glasgow. He's getting in Glasgow in like an hour. (laughs) Anyway, uh, thanks for coming on. uh, Oh, thank you. That was unreal, lads. Thanks Thank for you so much, me. Mike. It was brilliant. And I think because I was so curious, just because you're such a great rack on tour, I was wondering if the improv was part of that or whether it's. Is, have you always been a bit like this? Like, it's, a, it's a bit of an Irish gift of the gab thing you've got, do you think? What would you say? Do you know what? Do you know what? The, the storytelling element, I, um, I'm just very. I did my own podcast uh, for like. Uh, I Did I go do it for two years? I still do it now all the time. I do a solo one. And for the first year and a half, I record every episode and then I would listen back and edit every single episode like meticulously. I was like obsessed OCD, especially over the pandemic. Mm. So I'd listen back and I just was like, I learned all these kind of like lessons of what sounds good in, in storytelling or what makes storytelling good or what makes it good. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like just little things. I'm very interested. You gave me that book Into the Woods. There's another oh, sure. book called The Science of Storytelling. Um, and I just think there's nothing better than if someone can really like fucking John York, yeah, John well, there's York. Wee, there's wee hooks you can get people with, you know. Yeah, I'm terrible at telling stories, but I'm, I can do it in stand up. Yeah, I've figured out how to do it performance wise. But you know, sometimes somebody will see me do stand up, then they'll speak to me at yeah. like, the bar after, and I'll start a story that sounds good because I know how. They, yeah, but they'll be like, oh, I didn't really go anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> you start showing them that fucking furball hang about the yeah. fuck so it was. Like, <laughs> <laughs> 
but it doesn't have any it's amorphous globosus yeah. it's called mm. and, but, uh, uh, but I think there is, <laughs> I mean the Scottish have the same but there is an Irish like there is a thing like, like my father is a great storyteller he's right. unbelievable at it I had him on my podcast actually my Christ show it's <laughs> one of the best yeah yeah it's Brilliant. amazing the older like, the flute the sweeter the song <laughs> <laughs> but he has a million phrases like that you know what I mean like he's yeah. just they're flowing out of him and in Ireland I say it's the same here it's just like people being a, being able to tell a good story is mm. like I, I'm in awe of it that's like, a beautiful skill a beautiful skill well, yeah. you've got it in spades yeah. mate if you oh. don't mind me saying oh, no, I remember brother. the first night I made, when you came back from Chicago and I made yeah. you go away and I was uh, and I was just like oh god that's so special what a special performance it sounds so freakish to say but it really was and I never saw you for like four years and then yeah. the next time I saw you we had the wee Westlife night in Nottingham. <laughs> yeah, that's and right. And I didn't see you again for ages. And it's just, every time I see you, I'm just so happy. Oh, thank you, man. Yeah. You too. Well, Good listen, lads. Been very happy uh, for you to join us, Mike. Uh, before you go, do you want to plug your special? Yes, my special, uh, uh, Mike Rice Comedy, uh, Dot com for tour. My special is on YouTube. An Irish so, disgrace. An Irish disgrace on YouTube. My a tour coming out. I'm going to be in Glasgow, Edinburgh, all over England. That's MikeRiceComedy.com. I tickets you're all the there. Glee and yeah. the stand or the Glee and Monkey Barrel. I think I'm in the stand, the stand. It's Glasgow stand, yeah. and then Monkey Barrel in Edinburgh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so, but you're in the Glee down south in Birmingham. And I'm in the Lee in Birmingham. Yeah, so come to all those shows. Yeah. Podcast with Vittorio. Podcast well. with Vittorio, a uh, guide to parenting. Podcast with Rob Mariarty, uh, Big Mike and the Chief. And uh, I need to meet Rob, man. Oh, he's, he's one of the yeah, freakish cunts yeah. I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> he's, the need, <laughs> he's the best. He's the best. He's the best. That's coming uh, for me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> He's so funny, man. Um, anyway, lads, thanks a million for having me. Thanks, I love you. Uh, thanks for doing it, you. Mike. Of um, before we go, as ever, just please remember to like and subscribe on YouTube. Give us a five star review on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. And you can uh, follow us at SomeLapPod on Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter. And send us any questions you've got to the email address, which is SomeLapPod at gmail.com. Thanks. We're quite again, Mike. up in this couch, aren't we? I know, I was going to say, you have <laughs> been sitting right in the middle this whole time. <laughs> I'm trying to fucking make eye contact. Look, oh, look how much space he's got in this house. But anyway, regardless, thank you very much to Chris McAuffer Boyd for guest hosting this, this afternoon. Uh, hope you've enjoyed it, guys, and we'll speak to you soon. See you later, lads. Cheers. Bye-bye.